Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. In the previous video, we completed our, uh, for the most part, we completed our circularization maneuver around Mars using the atmosphere as our break. Uh, as you can see here in Orbit MFD, um, it's not perfect, but uh, you, you, I don't think you really get perfection with that maneuver. Uh, certainly not on the first pass. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and let's unpause and consider our options. So option number one, we could go up to apoapsis, we could pull up our periapsis a little bit, and, and then we could go around to periapsis and lower our apoapsis if we were really trying to get like a circular orbit. Uh, I don't think that's necessary because really all we're trying to do is land. So, you know, we're not trying to orbit or sync up with a satellite or anything. So getting a, a circular orbit seems uh, pointless and like a waste of fuel. Let me look at, speaking of fuel, so he, we have 3.7 left. I think that's uh, a lot more than we had last time. Still not as much as I would like to see. But I think it's enough. Because if we need to, if we need to bleed off like a um, like 1,000 meters per second using the retro engines, that would still leave us with like 2,700 for hover. And I think, uh, I think we can do it. Um, I just currently though I need to f figure out what I want to do with my uh, with my orbit. Do we want to go around again and try to lower our apoapsis a little bit? Maybe let's look at our oxygen. All right, so we still have 12 days, so that's not a concern. So would it be worth trying to do another maneuver through the atmosphere? Um, all right, before we make that decision, let's look at map. Actually, base sinks what I want. And currently, so four orbits from now, based on our current orbit, which is not sustainable, we would have a, a passage of uh, 387 kilometers, and I'm certain we have that cross range. Um, pretty sure. But ideally, we would still like to bring that down. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to go around one more time. I don't think... I need to raise my periapsis. I think we can just enter the atmosphere heads up and the the shape of the vessel will will basically reshape our orbit. But I don't think I should risk it either. So let's go to apoapsis. Are almost there. Let's go prograde. And we're just going to use a little bit of fuel to bring up the other side of our orbit. And then we're going to scrape back through the atmosphere one more time. And we don't need to bring it up very much. Let's just go for... I'm going to say that that's fine right there. I feel like that should be fine. Let me just bring it up just a bit more. There we go. Now I feel just a little more comfortable. All right, now we're going to warp time forward. We're going to dip down into the atmosphere one more time. We're at 100 time warp. We're going to go down to about 100 and then come out of time warp. Let's actually go 150. All right, about right there. And now we need to turn on the APU. And we'll bring the radiator back in for now. Yeah, we probably, I guess we can go ahead and deploy the air brake. And let's go ahead and turn off the APU. I guess I started this a bit too soon. And let's warp time forward. And this time we're going to stay heads up relative to the planet. Translation rotation. So 
so that we can keep our vertical speed very well under control and we really just want to bleed off a little bit more velocity just to help circularize the orbit a little bit more and maybe um, bring down our closest approach to the base at the same time. I don't need to worry about temperatures or anything like that so I'm going to have these views up because they're much easier to see and we'll go to surface mode here and let's just uh, warp time forward. All right, we can see the other side of our orbit coming down. It's coming down pretty fast, actually, so let me go ahead and pitch out a little bit. Let me use some up elevator. Because again, I don't want to, you know, bring my orbit too far down. And hopefully, and I fear, I fear I did. So actually, let me bring back in the air brake, which is control B. That way we don't have as much drag. And now we'll bring down our trim. All right, we're almost at zero on our vertical speed. So, okay. And the other thing I wanted to kind of try to look at was some kind of off base distance. So it looks like past three, maybe. So maybe if I rotate that way hard to know because I'm also losing velocity at the same time so it's hard to know which way helps okay so that looks like passage 3 the off base distance is um, going up so let me see if I can rotate the other way if it helps at all doesn't really seem to be helping. That is a lot of, that's still quite a bit. What about if I cycle through? All right, so maybe we'll have to orbit for a bit to, so. But I think this was a reasonable pass because it brought our APA down so far by, I wanna say, uh, what was it before, 1.1, I think. But this makes our orbit a bit more circular which means, you know, when we do lower the other side of our orbit, we won't be hitting Mars quite as fast, so we won't have as much velocity to bleed off. I mean, if we really wanted to be really particular about it, we could do this maneuver several times, but I think you get into that situation, you know, law of diminishing returns, and we do have time to consider. We don't have unlimited locks, but we could do this a few times if we needed to but we're not going to. This is, the, this is the last pass. All right, I don't have to worry so much now about speed, so I'll throw that air brake back out for now. Just to bring that APA down as much as we can on this pass, and we are climbing back out, so with each passing kilometer you know we're getting less and less benefit out of the atmosphere so but if we break like if we get lower than 200 i'll bring the i'll bring the air brake back in actually if we get lower than 300 i'll bring the air brake back in but i think by that point we're going to have climbed out so much that All right, let me rotate the other way. Okay, yeah, I don't think it really matters in terms of our off base distance because we're, you know, s several things are happening here. Not only are we you know, trying to steer the vessel a little bit with cross range, and we're doing that at such a high altitude that it's not helping much, but we're also slowing down a little bit. And I think that change in velocity actually is having more impact on our off base distance than any benefit that we could possibly be getting out of steering or trying to steer. 
But yeah, I, I think this was a good pass. Brought down our APA quite a bit to help, you know, circularize our orbit to a better point. So yeah, I'm going to say this was definitely worth it. It was a good call. So potentially orbit 9. And that has the distance off base increasing. So I will try to ro roll around the other direction. But again, I don't think it will help. In fact, it might even make the off base distance climb even faster. But yeah, there's just... Uh, all right, and I think we're basically done here for the most part because we're back up to like 58 kilometers or 67, depending. What does this one say? So this one says 59, this one says 59, this one says 69. This is why I have trust issues. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so, all right, control A. Bring back in the air brake, and we'll deploy the radiator. A bit of time warp to get through all that faster. Turn off the APU. Switch over to these views. And now let's just do a bit of time warp to climb back out into space. Let's get well and truly out into space. Okay, I'd say now we're well and truly out into space around Mars. All right, so let's bring up map. And we're going to be landing at night, unfortunately. Although maybe if we go around a few times, maybe the daylight terminator, day-night terminator will move over, but probably not. So we are targeting Olympus. I really don't want to land at night. I really, really, really don't want to land at night. Which way is the day-night Terminator moving? So it is going in that direction. So hopefully by the time we orbit a few more times... In fact, may, oh, I, th I think I'll just plan on that. I'll plan on, like, forcing it, because landing at night sucks. Um, at least since the ambient light levels aren't working, otherwise I wouldn't mind. So let me think, what am I trying to look at next? I had something in mind, orbit, that was it. Now if we're going to orbit a few times, we now, we definitely have to bring up our PEA. Um, I don't need, uh, man, does that, yeah, yeah, we need to bring up our PEA. So let's go to Apoapsis. Okay, we're getting close. Let's go prograde. I'm not being very conservative with the autopilot fuel here. Coming up on Apoapsis. And we just need like 100 kilometers. Alright, a little bit on the main engine. This feels so wasteful. <laughs> Bringing up the orbit just to take it back down soon. We'll go with that. Because I feel like that's definitely high enough that I don't have to worry about atmospheric effects. All right, let's cycle through here. So ninth orbit, that's probably what we're going to take. But let me look at this first page again. So that's 548. That one's 160. So I think we'll probably take that ninth orbit. Um, and one reason to do that would be because by then, hopefully, the day-night Terminator will be over top of Olympus. So actually, let's make that our next action here. Let's warp time forward and just kind of watch. And then as I'm coming around to the low side, let me have surface up. Okay, I'm climbing back out. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, probably even the next orbit. Yeah. All right, so let's cycle and take a look. So now we're saying seven orbits out, but is that now is that too far out? Well, that actually put us at night because we could take this orbit here, but 548 cross range does concern me a little bit. I think it should be fine, but uh, let me 
let's go for this orbit here just because the cross range is so much lower all right so let's go ahead and warp time forward Ooh, that was fast oh man of course oh no and I overshot it We have 181 and 13 orbits. Wait, oh, no, I didn't quite overshoot. No, this is still counting up, so I didn't overshoot. But again, I would really like to land during the day, but I don't know for sure if that orbit will be during the day. Let's check our locks. We're at 12 days. We're fine on locks. Let's try it. Let's try to pass. Let's try to get to this point, and hopefully that will be during the day. Because night landings with zero light in a simulator just isn't good, in my opinion. Ugh, looks like it's going to miss. Uh, we're gonna. I think we're gonna take it anyway. Yeah, it's gonna be in the dark. Dang it! Does there happen to be another one coming up? Two hundred and three. Let's take this one. That's it. Final decision. It looks like we might have some amount of light, but probably not. All right. Yeah, probably. No, I think by the time we get there, it's going to be dark. All right, so this number is climbing up. So we'll go. We're actually going to go about right here. So we're about a quarter of an orbit away from our deorbit maneuver. I'm going to save at this point, pause, switch to the overlay. And we'll say that's going to be good enough for this part. And when we come back, we'll start our deorbit burn and attempt our landing. Although I think the I think the complete landing will take two videos because gliding down through the atmosphere just takes quite a while. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed this part. If so, leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.